Hello Summoner, I'm fed up with solo queue, but you can call me Nathan. And I would like to welcome you guys back to another Pro Guides video. Today we'll be going over 5 high elo overpowered picks. This list is meant for people in Emerald or higher, so Malphite isn't going to cut it. Be sure to sub to the channel and ring that notification bell. Before we continue, we have our question of the day. What champion do you think is going to be the best Iron Chef? I only know that it definitely would not be Teemo, since nobody likes to get food poisoning. My bet is on Pantheon, because he's always meant to be a baker. Or maybe even Jinx, because it looks like she could stir up some trouble. I kind of like him a little bit crazy, you know? Anyway, Sonic waving into our first pick is a dragon warrior himself, Lee Sin. The martial artist enjoys a diverse moveset that allows him to be more mobile than most champions in Wild Rift. With two separate dashes, Lee Sin is able to have strong map control and positioning. With Sonic Wave, he's able to jump walls to jump between camps or finish off low enemies. This Kung Fu Master can build speed increasing items such as Yumi's Ghost Blade to chase down gamers anywhere on the map. Ghost Blade also provides a nice bit of lethality that can dramatically increase Lee Sin's lead in the early game. Lee Sin's always had a strong early presence in the game due to his fast clears and solid engage potential. Though this latest patch has made his job as a jungler smoother by reducing the health of major jungle camps such as Krugs and Grom. The ancient Krugs health will decrease from 1600 to 1200, while the smaller Krugs had their HP reduced from 600 to 500. Meanwhile, the Grom's health has been reduced from 2500 to 2200. These major jungle changes help all junglers in the game, but Lee Sin already had a fast clear time. Now he's just able to freely roam the map and hunt down any opposing laner that are even slightly overextending. This recent jungle update has also opened up more opportunities for junglers to invade each other's jungle. Lee Sin is a master in this category. With this hyper mobile first ability letting him swoop undetected over enemy lines, and with Krug's health decrease, the Kung Fu King can quickly decimate these camps. At the start of the game, you should try and lure and early engage with Lee Sin. This is because Lee Sin's first ability is versatile and provides a ton of range as well as damage in the early game. Usually only Lee Sin mains know this, but the second part of Lee Sin's first ability does more damage to lower health targets. This means that Lee Sin has an early game execute that most junglers won't expect coming. At level 1, Lee Sin's resonating strike deals 55 plus 100% of Lee Sin's base attack damage total. But this damage can be 200% of Lee Sin's base attack if the enemy has low enough health. Only start with this first ability if you know that you're able to engage on the enemy. Other than that, it is completely normal to start with the second ability, Safeguard for Shielding and Jungle Sustain. We truly appreciate all the support that you guys provide to our channel. So before we move on, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to become a more active part in the community, be sure to join our Pro Guys Wild Rift Discord to interact with more viewers such as yourselves, or me, or Genghis, but probably more so me. Staying mobile in the jungle is all good and dandy, but staying in control of lane is equally as important. Aurelia is our next overpowered pick for high elo players as her playstyle requires a precise stance. Aurelia has a decently high skill cap with heavily rewarding combos. If the enemy laner is standing too close to a dying minion, she can take full advantage of the situation by dashing to the minion. This will kill the minion and reset Aurelia's first ability, that way she can go ahead and keep engaging for some poke. As you could expect, this makes farming against Aurelia an arduous task that many mid laners can't even deal with. Champions like Ziggs or Orianna, who are used to hiding behind their minion waves, get outclassed by the Blade Dancer. Her impressive movement can also be abused with the long range of her third ability, Flawless Duet. As you know, Flawless Duet is activated once you place her first blade, and a second blade to send anything in between the two blades. With Wild Rift being a more enclosed map, it is usually possible to hide Aurelia's first blade in Fog of War or Brush, making for a surprising stun when she dashes in to engage. This dash slash stun movement is also used by many top tier players in high elo, giving more meaning to mastering this champion. Flawless Duet can be easily followed with their ultimate, Vanguard's Edge, to trap the enemy into forcing a 1v1. This makes Irelia a formidable mid lane roamer, because she can surprise the enemies and hopefully lock them in with a stun that they can't escape from. Irelia was born for these situations, because anybody caught in her ultimate is automatically marked, giving Irelia a free reign to dash between any enemies caught within it. This combo stacks very nicely with Irelia's primary rune conquerors. This is because she can stack pile up quickly and the adaptive force is fully utilized by her kit. Most players view Irelia as a heavy attack damage champion, but her final three abilities do have ability power scaling. Not enough of a scaling to warrant an AP Irelia build, but enough to hurt tanks that only build armor against attack damage champions. Her damage is overwhelming and the master with the champion gives clear rewards that help round out a well seasoned player. With her lane control and smooth movements, we have to recommend Irelia as one of the top overpowered picks. Also, if you want to learn more about Irelia, be sure to check out Irelia in our 1 minute short. Irelia is not the only one that you should keep an eye out for for the mid lane. 
Twisted Fate has recently been gaining traction as a fast-paced mid laner. TF used to rely more heavily on lane assistance, but after some recent buffs, his attack speed and damage output has made him a formidable threat. The buff was to his third ability, Stack Deck, which passively grants attack speed and after consuming all of the stacks, deals bonus ability power as an empowered auto attack. Stacked Deck's passive attack speed was only added in patch 2.3, before the ability would only have bonus attack speed when activated. Now, the ability grants bonus attack speed passively and actively when pressed. On top of this, they decided to buff the AP ratio of a stacked deck. This means that trading with Twisted Fate is more dangerous than last patch. This complements well with Conquerors for fast adaptive damage stacks. Bonus attack speed mixed with adaptive damage is perfect for taking on tankier foes that might build a lot of armor. This is relevant because Twisted Fate appears everywhere on the map and has to take on any opposition. The main ability that allows TF to traverse across the map is his ultimate, Destiny. It is the card Master's Destiny to pop up in the Dragon Lane and catch an overextended ADC. His ability only takes 2 seconds to completely cast and places him exactly where he wants to be. The perfect positioning of the spell barely gives any warning, with the enemies only being hit with the eye above their head. Luckily for TF, this warning indicator is greatly ignored in the heat of a teamfight, giving him some extra time to pick out the most favorable position. Positioning with the Gambit has never been more important with his increased attack speed. Continuing to hit the enemy with an onslaught of attacks is vital, and the cornerstone of being a great ADC. Unlike most ADCs, the card thrower gets the additional benefit of being also a mage. His second ability, Pick a Card, gives him a stun that catches every player by surprise. The stun duration is increased by every single point that you put into this ability. We have to recommend Twisted Fate as an S tier mid laner because of his damage output and hyper mobility that cannot be matched. Sticking to the theme of mobility is Evelyn, who sneaks about in the jungle and just disappears like my last date. Evelyn has been and still is a powerful jungler that could catch out opponents in the most unsuspecting of situations. Evelyn is seriously sus, especially when you see her heart filling up on top of your champion's head. This effect happens when Evelyn decides to mark a champion with her second ability, Allure. Allure doesn't work like your average charming ability. That takes 2.5 seconds for the ability to be fully activated and this time, it gives the enemy to reposition. However, when Eve does expunge her ability, it causes the target to be charmed for 1-2 to two seconds and reduces their armor by at least 20%. This is where Evelyn's damage surprises people, because after Allure lands, their magic resistance is, like I mentioned, shredded by 20%, and it leaves them a sitting duck towards Evelyn's barrage of hate spikes. This ability has one last surprise that is overlooked by the general community. When an opposing monster is hit with the full effect of Alert, they take 300 plus 60% of Evelyn's AP ratio as magic damage. This makes taking down camps and objectives faster and much more reliable than most junglers. And with the recent jungle camp nerfs, her camp clearing has been accelerated, leaving time for Evelyn to invade an unsuspecting jungler. Evelyn is heavily rewarded with this style of gameplay in the current meta. Because walking in the jungle or river grants any champion with smite an additional 4 mana regeneration per second, and on top of that, Evelyn has a passive heal built into her passive. So after she clears all the camps in her jungle, she is passively being granted bonus HP and mana for just walking around in the enemy's jungle. The bonus mana may be available to every jungler, but her passive healing is unique to her kit, allowing her time to position and catch out unsuspecting enemies. A fun little trick with Evelyn is to get level 5 and wait for the enemy ADC to back. While they're walking back from the base, get in between the opposing enemy's tower to land a full combo without the enemy even paying attention. This trick works primarily in low elo, but I've seen it pulled off a fair number of times even in the higher ranks. Evelyn is a chaotic force to handle in the jungle. This is why we recommend you try her out in the future Wild Rift games. Last but definitely not least is our favorite light up girl Lux. Lux has been sitting pretty in the S tier as a support and for good reason. Her range is very generous, giving ample opportunities for ADCs to follow up on attacks, and her shields are effective, keeping the ADCs alive for a long period of time. Where the last few champions succeed in mobility, Lux succeeds in zoning. She is able to influence the enemy's movements by laying down strategic Lucent Singularities, her third ability. This ability has a wide radius and stays on the field for up to 5 seconds, making maneuvering around it a chore that the enemy later will have to deal with. If Lucent Singularity isn't directing the enemy, she can also rely on her first ability, Light Binding, to keep the enemies in place. In fact, Lux's main combo is using these two abilities in tandem with her ultimate, Final Spark, to burst the opponent's health down to oblivion. This ability also has a huge radius scaling far enough to shoot from tower to tower. Some well-timed Lux players may have even stole Dragon or Baron before with this powerful ability. Final Spark provides the most damage out of Lux's abilities, but this is not the reason why we put her in the S tier. Lux's true specialty comes with her second ability, Prismatic Barrier. At level 1, Lux's shield can block up to 140 damage when paired with Summon Airy, completely mitigating any early game poke that enemy hoped to land. 
This shield gives room for our ADC to land their own poke without having to worry about retaliation. A common combo for Lux players is to engage with the third ability to slow down the enemy's movements, and while they're slow, throw out her first ability to stun them. This gives a great opportunity for Lux's ADC to land their own poke while being protected by Lux's shield. And speaking of her shield, it does even more when paired with Harmonic Echo. The bonus shielding also heals allies if she's able to land more than one of them. This gives Lux a team-wide sustain that is not expected of a burst mage. Overall, Lux is a safe and strong pick in the dragon lane, always helping her team out in multiple scenarios. The meta is always being fine-tuned in Wild Rift, so be sure you subscribe to stay up to date with every change. I've been your host, Nathan Ng, and I can't wait to catch you guys next time. Sorry, and thank you so much for bearing with my voice, as I've had a very, very long day on set, and it is very, very difficult for me to talk. But appreciate you all. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.